I was just thinking today, they destroy so many concepts and understandings. They even they put, I was thinking especially about kings. They make everyone to watch that cartoon and that musical. What is that? Um, the Jungle, the uh, Lion King. And they have one song, they say what? When he's a little kid, it's good to be king. Right? It's good to be king. Because now, the idea first of kingship, no one understands it properly. Because this world does not support that kind of thinking and understanding. They say king means he's corrupt, uh, he tortures people, is evil, is a tyrant, he just collects everything. So we cannot have even a normal conversation about that, regular conversation about that, balanced, objective conversation about this concept. So, Sulaiman alayhi salam, of the test that he had to go through, read, especially dealing with women. Read. You find out, we will talk about it, how difficult it was for him. Because bring bring her up, bring her up. Yeah. It's okay. It'll be okay. Yeah. So the test that he had to go through. It's not that easy. Very difficult. Some prophets also, the test that he had to go through. Mm, because they are so near to their Lord. And now, it may seem small to us, but to them, it's a big thing. Like Yunus alayhi salam, the prophet, who? Jonah. Hmm? He was sent to speak to his nation, just like this, to say, run away from this world. Run away from your evil characteristics. Run to goodness. Run to the creator of goodness. Leave all this evil corruption. Leave the evil inside. They didn't like him. <coughs> they tortured him. They beat him up year after year. We uh, he got so tired from it that he decided to run away. He ran away. For us, it's understandable. He ran away. But for a prophet to run away from that kind of responsibility, he ended up in the ship. He ended up pulling the straw. Although they know that he's a holy one, he, he ended up being swallowed by the whale and he ended up being in seclusion in the whale's belly for 40 days. And his zikr was what? La ilaha illa anta subhana in kuntu min al There is no Lord but you. <coughs> Glory be to you. And I'm one, I'm one of those who oppress my own self. So in reality too, he is not punishing us. We are punishing ourselves. We are punishing ourselves. We have that ability to turn this world into a paradise. We have the ability to feed every single person in this life to provide. We have the ability to provide the best care and love to be given everywhere to everyone. We have that ability. But we chose our evil inclination. That time, with all the resources in this world, that we can even feed not 7 billion, 70 billion people in this world we can feed, we can provide. But when everyone wants to live like kings, when everyone wants to waste, when everybody wants just to take and not to give, then this world, 7 billion is too many people. With that kind of ego, 
Even seven people is too many. Because you're going to say, it must be only me. Do you understand? Because the Prophet says, what is enough for one is enough for two. What is enough for two is enough for three. Meaning sharing. Now once you get into the spirit of sharing, now, because again, sharing to be generous, that is again a divine quality. You understand now how those qualities are given to mankind? Divine qualities are given to mankind. To share, once you start sharing, once you become generous, now the feeling that comes to you now, nothing else can replace that feeling. But that has to be taught. In reality, it's in everyone. Kids share all the time. But once they learn, they pick up because they're like sponges, dry sponges, you know. If they pick up the wrong thing, that's what they're going to learn. We're not teaching the kids to share. So now they're going to grow up, say, I am daddy's little princess. Me, not you, but my daddy called me. No, me. And so, it starts from there too. But once you teach them to share, it doesn't matter what you call yourself, your title, but you are sharing and you have a very good feeling from it. And you don't feel like you're pulled. You feel more free. That time, you can turn this world into a paradise, yes. But that divine quality is there inside of us. That evil inclination is also there inside of us. And that free will, again, which is a divine quality, free will, iradat, free will, we must use now to choose the divine quality instead of the evil inclinations. In Sufic terms, meaning to, s to choose submission to the will of Allah instead of submitting to our nafs. You understand? It is uh, a knowledge that you have to learn. But that knowledge that you have to learn, it is not in books. It is not through study outside. It is through study here. It is to open this book to understand yourself. To look at your actions, your intentions, by day, by month, by year, to understand, to think you, to meditate in you. To say, today I did this like this. Why I did this? What was the reason? This is self-reflection. This is something that the Quran is saying over and over and over again. Think. Why don't you think? This is for men of thinking. Think. You must think. Over and over again, Allah is ordering us to think. Because just by using our intelligence and our reflection, we will be able to find Him. You don't need holy books to come. You will find Him. You don't need holy people to come. You will find Him. Because He has put that spark in each and every one of us. But He's so generous, He says, I'm sending you books, I'm sending you prophets, I'm sending you holy people, I'm sending you signs. Now, if you don't wake up, what am I supposed to do? Because the blind man if he closes, the man who closes his eyes and makes himself to be blind, you think that time when you tell him that there is a son, he's going to believe you? He's never going to believe you. You say, open. He says, no. He says, you are blind. I'm not blind, he's saying. So until the man wakes up, we cannot do anything. But he's going to wake up. In reality, it's not like Allah is leaving him alone to every single moment. He is speaking. He is screaming. The angels are speaking. The angels are screaming at us. And there are so many signs now. But if you cannot read, it doesn't matter. You cannot then say, why you didn't warn me? The warning is there. But you just don't want to see it. So what makes us to, become, to come to this level of not being able to read, it is when we are concentrating on our ego. We don't observe, we don't think. We are just following our nafs. Hawa, dunya and shaitan. So in this way, 
It is important to sit down and to think. Once you do that, then yes, that is meditation. That is tafakkur. Then you walk, you will walk and you will meditate too. You eat, you eat and you meditate too. You pray, you pray and you meditate too. You watch something, it's also everything you do now is a meditation, is thinking, is putting things together, is understanding. You're not doing things what we call in ghaflat, in heedlessness, doing things mindlessly. You're going to put your mind there, then that's a time. What y- is your job? Your job is to collect firewood. You're going to find now divine secrets in the forest. What is your job? Your job is a doctor. You'll find divine secrets in the human body. Everywhere you turn now, it's undeniable. You'll find that secret. Babina Allahu Tawfiq al-Fatiha.